Many are predicting that the worst is yet to come, which is unfortunate, said one person here. Until now, they've enjoyed the reputation of being the nation's icebox. Watched a burglar in his home this morning by webcam. As a journalist of over 25 years, stories are what make my world turn. Reporting live from the Dallas Newsroom tonight, Jeff Crilly, Fox 4 News. But in 2008, I took the jump from my familiar life and started a PR firm from my home. We're talking about anyone with a camcorder like the one I'm using becomes a television network. We started slowly growing the company and we now have over a hundred clients and we've branched into the world of live digital broadcasting. I now own eight different TV studios and have a huge team and the stories that I now get to share are sometimes the most important of my life. Life has a funny way of coming around full circle. This is The Jeff Crilly Show. Welcome to my show. You know, when I was a kid, I grew up watching Steve Austin, The Bionic Man, and it seemed very futuristic, and it's getting less futuristic every single day. Joining us to talk about that is Dr. Robert Reniker. He is the founder of the Texas Biomedical Device Center. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. So uh, when we talk about Steve Austin and, and you know, the $6 million man, well, first of all, $6 million doesn't go as far. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to go. Up. <laughs> but, uh, but you've been in this space for a while now, uh, a part man, part machine. Uh, let's talk about that. Sure. So most, I'm a neural engineer, mm -hmm. which our, our, our job is to develop technologies to allow us to basically directly connect to the nervous system. So your brain and nerves, and so, so we can control your muscles. So we can put in sensory information, say visual or hearing, um, and develop technologies that will allow us to help people with either disabilities or injuries or augment uh, uh, normal function. And w one of the things that we've talked about in the past is the vagus nerve. Where, where does that run on your neck? Yeah, so the vagus nerve is right next to your carotid. So if you feel your pulse, it's yep. right on, it's actually next to that. And it, it runs from your gut. It talks to all your internal organs. It's, it's what tells you, like, when you're on the roller coaster and your stomach flips and you feel that feeling. Yes. That's telling your brain, oh, something's going on. Pay attention to this. But up in your brain, it's releasing chemicals that are important for learning. Because usually when you have that experience, it's something traumatic, like, say, a, a dog coming at you or something like that scary. And it's, it's helping you for the fight or flight response. So it's a very important nerve for signaling to your brain to get ready for, for action. And uh, it's, uh, to, to me, I think uh, the audience would be surprised that this is happening right here in our backyard on the UTD campus. Yes, it is. And it was actually, the idea was developed in 2007. And so from 2007 to 2020 today, about 13 years, we've gone from just the idea of being able to activate this nerve to rewire the brain to actually rewiring the brain to treat neurological injury and disease. So it's, it's been a pretty fascinating ride for the last 10, 12 years. Well, you and I have had the pleasure of working together um, several times in the last decade. Uh, we're going to roll a clip because uh, oh. you've been on the <laughs> national news. Uh, here you are talking on, on MSNBC. Uh, I think it's cool that the, when the national media needs a soundbite on something like this, they'll turn to someone like you. That has to be a, a source of pride. It is. And part of my job as a scientist or researcher is to convey to the public information that's somewhat scientific and difficult to understand in terms that are understandable. So that they, uh, if they have a loved one who has an injury or disease, knows where to go and under can understand a little bit better what, what we're trying to accomplish for them. And the last time we were together, I do remember a piece on CBS 11. We're going to roll a clip up okay. from that. Uh, it had to do with, oh, um, with athletes. Do you remember this, yes. this story? Yeah. And at the time, I, I remember seeing the... Uh, the technology and the technology was was larger than it is today. Yeah, and that that technology was a little bit different. So that was for detecting concussion. So right. one of the things that we were developing at that time was if we can actually prevent a, a really bad brain injury by detecting uh, an early onset injury. So say you took a hit and you your your eyes weren't quite working right or. Right. You, your balance was a little bit off, you might be much more likely to take that next big hit, which really would cause long-term damage. So that sensor you'd wear on your head, and what it would do is tell you when you took that big hit, so the, the uh, trainer could come in, mm -hmm. use our hands, headset to look at your eye motions, and then tell you whether or not you look like you had a concussion. 
Now, the goal wasn't to, to, to diagnose a concussion. It was to say, look, you've had an injury. Your responses are slower. You're, if you go back on the field, you're much more likely not to see that next big hit coming, and it could be the end of your career if you're not careful. So that was our goal with that technology at yeah. the time. Well, it's got to be exciting to work with uh, all these uh, biomedical engineers who are always kind of inventing and reinventing. It, it, it is super exciting. Um, at the same time, it's somewhat frustrating because we have solutions we've developed, mm -hmm. um, but they're difficult to get to patients. And so that's what we've been struggling with for the last four years, five years. It was uh, we, a partnership with the Caruth Foundation, uh, the Communities Foundation of Texas, funded uh, a commercial implant for the vagus nerve. And that, that work, um, without them, it would have never gotten done. Wow. Well, this, I believe in show and tell. And okay. so you, you brought some, sure. some props. Go ahead sure, and, sure. Uh, and grab them and show us what, what sure. you're talking about. So this device is what we call an implantable st stimulator, an IPG. And for the, those of the, my age, you know what a chiclet is, or you know, there's yeah. some gum that, that's this size today, but it's a tiny little device and it talks to your cell phone. It's implanted in, on a nerve on your neck called the vagus nerve we talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. And when, when it's activated by your cell phone, it'll stimulate the nerve and it releases chemicals in your brain that help you learn much faster and to a much greater extent than you would otherwise. And so this little device replaced a, a device that was about, I don't say the size of a Zippo lighter, aging myself again, but about the size of this little box. And it was implanted in your chest and then has a lead that runs up to the nerve in your neck. And when you have this device in, this device is $20,000, $30,000. You can't have an MRI usually. Um, the leads break 20%, 15 to 20% of the time within five years, so you have to go in and have a surgery. The battery wears out, so you have to replace the battery. With our device, which it doesn't have a battery, it doesn't have leads, doesn't have any of those issues, and you can still have an MRI. So if you're a stroke patient, spinal cord patient, you can still have the full care that you would normally get from uh, for, for your conditions. Well, give me a, a glimpse into the future. Do you see this being an answer to Parkinson's, Alzheimer's? And what, what, do you, yeah. what do you see? So that's, that's a wonderful question, and we don't know the answer to that. So degenerative diseases where the brain is constantly deteriorating, we may be able to slow that down with this technology. So if you think of it as we're enhancing the brain's ability to remember and to learn. Mm -hmm. um, and in those conditions, maybe we, instead of you dropping off the cliff at 65 or 70, maybe it's 75 or 80. So that's, we think that might be possible. We just don't have any evidence to that right now because in order to get that evidence, you have to be able to implant human beings. And right now, right. Um, you can't do that. We did just get approval for that particular device on February 20th from the FDA to do our spinal cord study. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a big deal. Yeah. Well, it's got to be exciting and frustrating, as you said, all at the same time, because you have this technology and you know that it can it can help uh, people. But there are so many le levels of approval with yeah. our government, right? To yeah. And look, the FDA is doing a wonderful job of keeping people safe and mm -hmm. making sure that there's not sa snake oil salesmen out there, right? So you don't want somebody going through surgery and putting themselves in danger for a device that just doesn't work. Right. And so they've got the appropriate level of controls and concerns. It's just, it's incredible. I mean, so it took us three years to go from the idea, from funding, and about $8 million to get to the point where we are today. Wow. Um, but I know the device is safe. I know it's going to work. So the FDA has ensured all that with the testing they make us do. Um, and now we've got to go through another probably 20 to $30 million to get this device approved for spinal cord. So what the FDA does is they say the device is safe. Now you've got to go do these clinical trials to show it's efficacious as well. Yes. So we've got to do those, and that, that's a very expensive prospect. And so that's why a lot of companies in the medical device industry um, have struggled to innovate because when you innovate, it's very expensive. And if you don't hit your endpoints in those studies, you don't get approval and you can't sell. Wow. So the FDA won't let you sell the device that doesn't actually work. Um, but that's, if you're 20 million in, yeah. And your device, what do you do, right? So it's very difficult. You have an answer for coronavirus? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I wish I did. I wish I did. My parents are 72, 73. And, yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's a scary time, especially for the elderly people. And I wish yeah. I did. I'm just, that's not my area of, of course, expertise. Of yeah. course. Well, we're going to put your website up on the screen. So if people want to get in touch with you, the, uh, the domain is right there, txbdc.com. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Dr. Renneker, thank you so much for being on the show. We'll have to have, have you back again soon. Thank you so much for having me. You bet. That's it for now. We'll see you next time.